Hello everyone and welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we're doing part two of our big block build. Now we're still in the disassembling phase, so today we're gonna be taking out the lifters, oil pan, oil pump, and a harmonic balancer. All these parts are very important to getting to our block so we can have that sent off to our machine shop. Let's jump in. All right, the next thing we need to talk about is your lifters. The, that is these things here. They interface between the camshaft and the rods. Now, it's really important if you are going to reuse the camshaft that's in here. Again, if you're gonna use this camshaft again, you have to put this lifter back in the home you found it in. You can't like take this lifter and put it over here. The wear surfaces won't be correct and it won't work. So. Keep that in mind if you're going to be using this cam. I'm not, so uh, all these are gonna go in the trash. I'm just gonna get everything new. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take all these out. You can even take a look at the health of your camshaft by taking a look at every lifter you take out. And this should be you know, pretty darn flat. If it is has a divot in it, that means those two surfaces are eating each other and the camshaft is no good, so you just have to throw them away anyway. So keep an eye out to see if this has a divot. If I find one, I'll point it out, but so far they've all been flat. Okay, so all mine were flat on the lifter side, but uh, yeah, if you had a noticeable divot in one of these lifters, um, you have to use a new camshaft and new lifters because it's junk. And since we're doing a ground up engine rebuild, it's not that surprising. The next thing we're gonna do is make absolutely sure that there is no oil left here in the pan. There sh really shouldn't be. I'm, I checked mine earlier. It was just dribbling a teeny tiny bit, so. If you haven't checked that there's no oil in it, you should go ahead and check. And you can see that mine's just kind of dribbling out. You're really not gonna get every last drop out of there, so. For all intents and purposes, it's empty. Because if you start taking things apart on the oil pan with oil in it, it'll just make a giant mess. Actually, it'll make a giant mess once you flip the engine over. And then no one likes, no one likes that. All right, so now it is time to flip the engine over so we can work on the bottom half. Make sure you have an oil drip pan down there to uh, catch any oil that falls out of Lifter Valley. All right, now we can remove our crushed Walmart Super Tech oil filter. <laughs> and you want to keep a rag handy because it could blurp up on you and make a mess. Just in case it leaks while the engine is flipped over like this. Yep, there we go. I was almost prepared for that. I recommend buying the Costco mega pack of rags if you decide to take apart your engine, you're gonna need it. All right, now we're ready to take the oil pan off here. And they're all half inch, and there's, I don't know, a dozen, maybe 15. So just go around the oil pan, uh, removing these bolts. Okay, so with all the bolts removed, and these front two were 716, so they weren't all half inch. We can go ahead and remove our oil pan. It might be a little stuck, so uh, hitting it with a hammer lightly, or uh, maybe using a prying implement might be your friend here. I'm going to negotiate this off. So this is kind of the moment of truth. Is it a two bolt? Is it a four bolt? Let's find out. It is a two bolt which is just fine, honestly. The four bolt's kind of the holy grail of Chevrolet big blocks. But the cool thing about a two bolt main is you can make it into a four bolt main if you really want to, but uh, we're not doing a ton of power. We're not doing, you know, drag runs. We're not doing anything too crazy with this engine. We kind of just want to cruise, so I'm probably just gonna keep it in the two bolt main configuration like it is right now. All right, what you're looking at here is a um, 
oil cooler adapter. So basically, um, the thought was that you put this on and you can run oil lines like this out to where the radiator is and you have a separate oil cooler. And that's not really gonna be necessary here. So we're gonna take a quarter inch Allen and remove these two top bolts that uh, hold it in place. Typically only see oil coolers like this in like a dry sump situation or like a really high performance situation. This isn't either of those, or at least the way we're building it. It's always good to take this stuff off if you ask me. Because we're just gonna, what we're gonna do though is we're gonna get a bypass uh, adapter that goes in here and you can put like normal oil, spin on type oil filters. And we'll show doing that when we're doing the um, build section of this video tutorial series. These two Allen's here. That should just come off like that. Oh yeah, lovely. You can even do this part uh, before you take the pan off to make it a little easier on yourself. It was a little um, annoying to try to get the pan out. Now, if you look down in there, obviously there's really not a way to get a conventional spin type oil filter on here, but that's kind of where the adapter comes in. There's a, an adapter that's made that goes down in here and makes it so you can put on a normal spin type oil filter, which is what we're gonna want. The next thing we need to take off and remove is the oil pump located right here. And you remove that with a 5 8 socket. There we go, kind of a longer bolt, so you might want to put this in a uh, special spot, especially if you're going to reuse this oil pump. I'm not, I'm going to get a new oil pump because it sucked to put this whole engine back together and then the oil pump goes out or it's not sufficient enough to lubricate our brand new engine. So, I recommend getting a new one. Just pull straight up like that. And there we go. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is remove the engine mounts. So you need a 916 socket and you can remove these three bolts. Just like that, now we can do the other one. And now we can do the other side. And we can remove it just like that. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove this three quarter inch bolt here. And we're gonna set this aside, along with both of these washers. So I'm over here on my workbench, and this is a harmonic balancer or harmonic dampener puller. So it does come with these interchangeable tips. So make sure you've got the correct one on. So this is the one we're gonna be using today. It's a little bit more pointier so it can go into the hole that is located at the end of the crank. If you don't have the correct one of these, you're gonna damage the end of the crank, which will make reinstalling it very difficult. So with this, you wanna make sure that all the threads are greased as well, because there's gonna be a lot of pressure going through there. I don't know if you can see that quite on camera, but I have greased the threads very, very well. Um, because why fight yourself? If you put grease on it, it's gonna make it easier for you. The next thing we're gonna go over are these bolts here. These are some bolts I have laying around the shop, but the washers are really important. You wanna make sure those are really robust, thick washers that when you put it through here, it's not just gonna pull the bolt head through this gap. So with that out of the way, we can go ahead and install it. So now we can install our harmonic balancer puller here, and when you're installing the grease bolts, we'll call them, you wanna make sure that they're installed as deep as they'll go. I'm just gonna do them finger tight for now and uh, get my ratchet in a second. Got my third one here. Might take a second for you to negotiate it so all three fit like that. And now, as I'm tightening them, I wanna make sure that this is in the middle. So, and you wanna make sure that you're doing it uh, you know, evenly just in case your bolts aren't long enough. See, these are a bit longer, so I'm just gonna spin this until it's tight, but uh, I'm gonna make sure that these are, these three outer bolts are as tight as 
they're gonna go. So mine uh, happen to be 9 16 I'm working on an American engine. If you have like a Japanese or European, it's uh, gonna be metric. But the process is exactly the same. So do not fret there. And obviously I have this on an engine stand, so it's a lot easier and uh, better viewing experience for you guys. But if you had to do this on a car, it's not impossible. Um, just keep that in mind as well. And make sure that these are fully seated because if you only have a couple threads on these bad boys, and then uh, you start putting a bunch of pressure, you'll just rip the threads right out and uh, good luck with that. So we're gonna make sure this is nice and snug like that. See, they've already bottomed out of their threads and this is loose, see what I mean? Which is good, because that gives us plenty of uh, room for adjusting things. There we go, those are tight. And then we can wind this in like that. So I've changed angles here. We can see that the balance, the puller is tilted up a little bit. So what we need to do is loosen this right here because this needs to be, this surface needs to be parallel to the harmonic balancer. So we went a little overzealous on that one. That was one too, because um, it's not going in completely evenly. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Actually, I think it could go in a little more. There we go. You can fine tune adjust it like this. You just wanna make sure that this surface is parallel to the harmonic balancer. And then look down inside of there too. So the hole on the crankshaft should be like this and that point from the puller should be fully seated into there like this. If it's off or crooked or not completely square on it, it's not gonna do its job. So we're good here. I'm gonna be using my half inch impact gun with, loaded with a 916 socket. Uh, if you don't have uh, an, an impact gun, a half inch gun, uh, you can try holding the back of the crankshaft. So you can put some bolts at the back of the crankshaft and uh, use a big pry bar and hold on to that if you don't have an air gun. But we do have an air gun, so we're gonna use it. And you're gonna be tightening it because you're pulling this off. two of our big block build series. This is in a big playlist here on YouTube that you at home could uh, watch and have your hand held all the way to building a big block Chevrolet in your own garage. That's what I want to do for this video series. I want to make it as uh, accessible to everyone as possible. So if you have any suggestions, leave them down below in the comments. I'll do my best to try to read all of those and respond. Thank you so very much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time.